Hey everybody! Last week I explained why constitutions and laws and states have no authority over you, and your relationship with them exists only because they force you into it. You might want to check out that video first, but it's not necessary. This week we're talking about the rule of law. The rule of law is considered one of the great things about democracy. We use it every day to tell people what to do and to threaten them. Because we're hypocrites and we're really indoctrinated. I'm Chris, and this is what had to be said. What is a law? There are all kinds of answers to that question. I would say a law is a threat. If you do something against the law, the police are empowered to stop you. But they don't just stop you. They're also empowered to escalate violence at their own discretion. If they want, they can physically restrain you, not because you're hurting people, but because you're not obeying them or the law. They can arrest you and throw you in a cage, if I weren't talking about the police, I would use the word kidnapping to describe that kind of behavior, but because of the double standards involved whenever we talk about the state, kidnapping is illegal unless you wear a badge, in which case it becomes lawful arrest. The police can beat you up, and in some places are encouraged to. They can track you with their vast network if you run away. And if you resist, they can kill you. And while police vary from country to country, their purpose is pretty much the same everywhere. To use violence on anyone who doesn't follow the law. Discussing law and which laws you like or want to see implemented without acknowledging the violence underpinning them is to ignore the law's most fundamental characteristic. There's a certain arrogance involved in most discussion of stiff laws and punishments. I know what's right for everyone, and in my, my opinion should always be enforced through the barrel of a gun. There should be a law. Only if you believe people should have their money, freedom, and sometimes lives taken away if they don't follow it. What needs to be understood about what we call the law is all laws are created and enforced by a single institution, the state. The state has a monopoly on making and enforcing laws. I think most people don't realize what that means. Well. Think of a monopoly in a market. A few people make all the decisions, and the rest of us have no say, even though we're affected by all those decisions. So who makes laws, and why? Well, that depends who you ask. If you consult a child's school textbook on the subject, we do. Citizens talk about stuff, and that somehow filters upwards to politicians who make policies that are just right for the people. Do you believe that? <laughs> when have you ever been consulted? Naturally, whatever their intentions, politicians don't have time to consult everyone or ask for their consent, and yet their policies apply to everyone. So how do they know which laws to vote for? Well, they consider self-interest. Whatever they want, they need money and power. After all, if you think your ideas are so good you have to impose them on others, you need money and power. So they accept bribes, uh, sorry, campaign contributions, sorry about that, totally different as we know, and Lobbyists working for rich people with big corporations now dictate their behavior. Well, you probably already knew that. You know money controls politics. Well, laws 
are the product of politics. So why would we assume laws were right? Is it something to do with thinking might makes right? But maybe if the effects of laws were positive, then it wouldn't matter who made them or why, right? It's true, you can always find a law that helps a victim. What I'm saying is the institution itself creates infinitely more victims than it helps. In this video, I'm laying out the case against the rule of law. I'd love to talk more broadly about real justice without the so-called justice system, and I will, but not here. Here, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. All the problems laws claim to attempt to solve are caused by laws. Let's talk about some of them. You've got property laws, which make it possible for some people to own all the best land, even when they've never even been there, and to do anything with it, including destroy it for money, however that affects other people, while others have to pay to live in an apartment. Piling rent control laws on top of those laws is like putting a band-aid on a wound instead of killing the dragon. You've got laws that create and empower corporations, which make it possible to accumulate vast sums of wealth on the backs of other people while making the owners immune from responsibility. So why are we only talking about limiting how much corporations can contribute to political campaigns. Is that the depth of our aspirations? Minor reform that will do nothing to change the power structure? You've got a series of laws that give state control over your body. The state tells you what you're allowed to put in your body and punishes you if it's the wrong thing. As such, they've criminalized drugs, well, some drugs, abortion, and prostitution. Whatever the, their traditional morals arguments, they claim ownership over your body. Then you've got intellectual property and patents, also pure inventions of the law, which make vital things like medicines too expensive for most people to afford. We're told those laws exist to spur innovation. That's the classic excuse. But of course, there was plenty of innovation before those laws existed, and plenty of innovation today in the things that aren't patented. What they really do is enable corporations to make huge profits off the latest research when really every, every product, new and old, comes on the back of thousands of years of accumulated knowledge. Why shouldn't the results of that research, that knowledge, belong to all of us? There are laws regulating every kind of business and trade. Some trades, because of the law only, take thousands of hours to become certified in, even if they're just really simple things. Lobby groups often use the law to protect their members from competition so they can charge more for their services. For example, doctors' lobbies use the law in Canada and the U.S. to restrict foreign-born doctors from practicing in the countries they've just moved to, so doctors who are already there can charge more. And as much as I disagree with this kind of thing, it's quite a rational thing to do. If the law exists, why not take advantage of it? But of course, it means less freedom for us, more control for a few people, and higher bills, too. And states zealously regulate trade. First, let's, let's do away with this fiction we call a free trade agreement. There's no such thing. All such agreements necessarily restrict trade. They say what can and can't be traded, most importantly in what quantities, and how much of a cut the treasury gets. 
Then you've got trade sanctions. What if you had friends in Iran, Cuba, or Venezuela you wanted to do business with? Sorry. Those countries are under embargo. You're not allowed to trade with any of them. There are all kinds of excuses about how those places and their governments are evil, but like most laws, morality has nothing to do with it, and money is everything. California's pistachio farmers are one group at the forefront of the trade war with Iran. In fact, there are dozens of books you could read, of a couple of which I'll link to in the description, which look at how rich people and their lobbyists have always used the law to constrain our behavior only for the purpose of making more money. Why would you respect laws like that? You follow them if you actually know about them, but only because the threat of violence hangs over your head. The people who write laws don't follow them, even when everyone knows they're violating labor laws or environmental laws, no one investigates them, so nothing happens. The IRS even admitted recently that they target the poor for auditing because it's just easier. Rich people lobby for complicated laws and tax codes that their lawyers and accountants take care of for them, while those of us without millions to hire teams of specialists are the ones who pay. And if they do actually get charged, they usually just get a fine and spend a tiny proportion of their total wealth to pay for it. When a poor person gets caught with drugs, they go to jail, maybe for years. When a rich person gets caught with drugs, they go to a rehab resort for a few weeks. HSBC, Wachovia, which is Wells Fargo now, Bank of America, Western Union, and probably a bunch more that I don't know about, have all laundered billions in drug money and got a fine. In other words, if you have money, you can pay to break the law. The rich aren't bound by borders, either. They fly wherever they want, and no one asks to see their passports or any other security questions. They cross borders on private jets, while people on foot are getting thrown into cages for the same thing. If you really believe we're all equal under the law, you're not paying attention. Of course, if you're poor or a racialized minority, you already knew that. The people in power want us to believe in punishment, and they've done so quite successfully. All they have to do is invent propaganda phrases like ignorance of the law is no excuse, say it a few times in newspapers and on TV, and next thing you know, everyone accepts it as a fact, rather than a highly questionable, highly debatable proposition. How many laws do you think there are? Laws aren't just to punish murder and theft. There are laws regulating every single human activity you can name. That means there are restrictions on every freedom you could name, plus a bunch you didn't even know you'd lost. You just grow up accepting state control over every aspect of your life as reality. Most laws criminalize peaceful activities. These are victimless crimes. In other words, you can become the subject of state violence without having hurt anyone at all. You just acted in a way the state says you're not allowed. It's been estimated that the average adult in the U.S. commits something like three felonies every day without even realizing it. That might seem like a lot, but especially, of course, to someone who says that they, they know the law and follow the law, but... Everything is criminalized and regulated and taxed. So what would you expect? I'd rather not get hung up on specific numbers. It might not be three felonies a day. But even if it's three felonies a year, it means we're all criminals. Did you know that? Well, let's see. 
Have you ever used a fake name online? Have you ever shared your Netflix password with anyone? Have you ever used someone else's Wi-Fi? Do you ever download copyrighted songs or movies? You know all those things are illegal, right? No? Oh, well, again, ignorance is no excuse, so I'm sure you'll be turning yourself in today. Did you ever drink when you were underage? Did you ever drive after drinking? Well, it doesn't matter, because you can also get arrested for walking home drunk. And in other places, you can get arrested for just sitting on the curb, regardless of how much you drank. Do you ever jaywalk? If not, why not? Because of the law? Don't forget, jaywalking is a crime, whether or not a car is coming. You never break that one? Maybe you should. You might like to read about the racist origins of jaywalking laws, by the way. Then there's crossing a border without filling out forms and paying fees first. So, international jaywalking. It used to be punished as a misdemeanor. Now we're locking people in cages indefinitely for it. I kind of think only cruel, racist people would support that kind of punishment. In this case, the law is really just an excuse to hurt people. But then, if you've been absorbing propaganda all your life, you might well be such a person and grasp at such an excuse. But let's not be hypocrites. Have you never stolen anything? Well, maybe not. But have you ever had a lemonade stand? Have you ever sold Girl Guide cookies? Have you ever had a garage sale or organized a farmer's market? Do you ever gamble at home with your friends? Have you ever played an instrument on the side of the road for money? Have you ever cut someone else's hair? You know you need a license for those things, right? You know you need to file taxes for all those things, right? Same with if you win money on the lottery, or even fantasy football, or make money on Amazon, or eBay, or even GoFundMe. Gotta report all those things on your taxes. Same with any tips you make as a server or a bartender. Would you want to tell someone on minimum wage or less they should be punished for keeping a little extra money that people chose to give them? If not, don't you believe in the rule of law? Or just the rule of some laws? The rule of laws you agree with and aren't likely to be charged with? It's easy to believe in some laws. Of course, rejecting certain laws just makes sense. You may have seen the TED Talk by one of the authors of Freakonomics about children's car seats. There's a link to that in the description, like everything else. As Stephen Levitt explains, the mandatory child car seat is not safe for everyone who's supposed to be in it. And there are safer alternatives. But they're illegal. Isn't your child's safety more important than following the law? Well, not if they could take your kids away for breaking it. But that's just one of dozens of laws we violate on the road. Have you ever not worn a seatbelt while the car was in motion? Have you ever gone over the speed limit? Yes, of course you have, you lawbreaker. Have you ever not come to a full stop at a stop sign or a red light? Ever? Have you ever started going before the light had quite turned green? Ever fail to signal when turning or changing lanes? Ever change lanes in an intersection? A lot of places require you to turn on your lights when it rains. Have you violated that law too? Have you ever used your phone while driving? How about parking? Do you ever park just a little bit too far away from the curb? It's okay. 
I won't turn you in. Protesting is highly illegal, contrary to what we've been told all our lives. Thousands of peaceful demonstrators get arrested every year in the U.S. alone for things like opposing pipelines built on their land, making speeches in front of the White House, protesting racist policing or shitty court decisions or neo-Nazi marches or whatever other issue they have. It doesn't matter if they were being peaceful. They still get punished. You can watch videos on YouTube of it happening right in front of your eyes if you really don't believe me. And there's always a law the state can use to cover themselves. The police will film you if you protest, so they can identify you again later. They might harass you or charge you with one of the millions of crimes you've probably committed. Filming them could get you arrested, though. It certainly has before. What else is illegal? Hmm. Faking a sick day can get you in trouble. Wearing a flag ooh, goes against the flag code. Singing happy birthday in public is illegal. Oh, for sure you've done that one. Writing something disturbing, even if it's fiction, has got people in front of judges before. Same with carrying a permanent marker around because it could be used for graffiti. And God forbid you sell Kinder Eggs or raw milk, because those are illegal too. Of course, you probably won't get prosecuted for any of these things. But first of all, you are a lawbreaker and a criminal, whether you admit it or not. And second, if someone wants to put you away for something, they can easily find an excuse. Please remember these things when we talk about freedom or justice or crime, and especially when someone claims to know and follow the law. Then there's whistleblowers who've been very aggressively targeted under the Espionage Act, especially by the Obama administration, who charged eight people with espionage for telling the public what's done with their money. Call it unconstitutional if you like. Say they're journalists protected by the Constitution. Those arguments mean nothing to the people in power. They prosecute the journalists who receive documents from whistleblowers too. As long as there's some law, the state will prosecute people and millions will applaud because it's the law and you gotta uphold the law for some reason. But why? What is that reason? Why would anyone approve of the law? Apartheid and segregation were legal. Slavery was legal. While slave revolts, or even just helping slaves run away, were illegal. Sodomy, i.e. being gay, was illegal all over the U.S. in the 20th century. And some states still outlaw sodomy and oral sex. That's your rule of law. It's also when police killed Eric Garner for selling individual cigarettes on the street. That's the rule of law. If you really believe in the rule of law, you might have approved of that. But think of what that means that you're approving of. Or maybe you, you just think he should have been thrown in jail. You know, his livelihood and freedom destroyed. You know, because there was a law. You may also have approved of the huge amount of money and manpower put into punishing people who jump subway fare turnstiles in New York recently. It will probably cost more money than they'll recoup, but the point is not the revenue. The point is compliance with the law. It's also about instilling the idea that these agents of the law can find you and punish you anywhere for anything. 
And of course, with these examples of laws and law enforcement, I can only scratch the surface. There are thousands upon thousands of laws you might be subject to. So ignorance of thousands of thousands of laws doesn't excuse you from being arrested and jailed? Maybe it should. But more importantly, none of us have any moral authority to use the law to tell people what to do. The law is not a standard of morality. It's not our state. The law is a tool for rich people to get richer and make the rest of us poorer. It's a tool for the people in power to gain more power and for the rest of us to lose our freedom. Ignorance of the law is no excuse? No. The law is no excuse.